talk to you about is how to see the terrain and, if, and its effects on combat operations. So one of the most important skills you need to have is you have to be able to take a map and have it talk to you. You have to be able to see how to put terrain in your advantage. Now, the Army has an acronym that it's, it's used forever, and, you, and, you te and they teach it as the acronym ACOCA. And what ACOCA is, it is an acronym to help you analyze the effects of, analyze terrain, and then its effects on combat operations. Unfortunately, what people typically do is they will break each of them down and just highlight them on a map and not really use it to kind of get to a so what. So I want to give you as a tool on how I rapidly use a coca to put terrain in my advantage. Okay, so quickly you'll hear the, there's a lot of ways you hear it, but it's, a coca stands for observation. It stands for key terrain, obstacles, cover and concealment, and avenues of approach. What you're doing with this acronym is, these are kind of like mental cues, so when you look at a map, you then see, okay, where is, do I have an advantage on observation? Where is the key terrain? Hey, where are the obstacles? Where on this map or this engagement is there cover and concealment? And where are the avenues? Unfortunately, though, if you just put this on a map, it doesn't really do anything for you. Black Horse and the opponents we're going to go against, they are masters at using terrain to their advantage. And understand, we, as the American Army, are almost always going to play an away game. It's just the way it's going to be, that we're always going to travel into some new theater and have to immediately fight an enemy on their terms in their country. So the skill that you have to have as an infantryman is to be able to look at ground, look at a map, and immediately understand where is the key terrain and how to put terrain into your favor. So here's my tool. First off, I'm going to show you, I just kind of drew up some terrain on this whiteboard. So what you see, this orange kind of represents hills, and you can see I kind of did the, the, uh, the ridge line. This green represents roads, right, and it's kind of an intersection. Here's kind of a river that flows down and these bridges. This is just me putting something together. First, go right to avenues of approach. Find the roads. The roads are where everybody's at. People take roads and there's and you prioritize roads, meaning paved roads. That's the people will always choose paved roads first. Then dirt roads, then two tracks, trails. Find all those places and you have to immediately know where they are. So first, I look for avenues of approach. Look at the map, avenues of approach. If I'm here, let's say this is where I'm starting. And I have to go up here. First, you find the roads. Know the enemy's going to find the roads too. Next, jump to obstacles. Once you find the roads, go to obstacles. Why? It's because roads are really long. Trying to control a road is impossible. But you can uh, control a point and you find where there is an obstacle. Obstacles are anything that funnel you, that canalize you, that restrict your movement, okay? For example, in this example, this a, a typical obstacle is right here. These bridges, why? Because all traffic has to go, there should be a bridge right here. All traffic has to go across bridges. Know the enemy will identify those as well. So you find avenues approach, you quickly find all the obstacles. They can also be a choke point. If you look, see where this road's gonna go right in here. The roads are gonna restrict you to this area, canalize you. So out of avenues approach, find those first, and then start finding all the obstacles. Once you find that, then you'll easily look for what gives you observation over those obstacles and these choke points. So, for example, if I was going to provide observation, anything to control these obstacles, this little hilltop on this side probably is a great spot. I can control here and here just from that one position. If I get that, I have observation. Another one probably be something about right here, depending on how far I can look. I can see here. I can see here. Look at this choke point. I would put somebody right here and maybe someone right here. 
So once you find these locations, you can quickly identify the avenues of approach, where the obstacles are, and where the observation is that overwatches those points. Now, what have I done? I have combined three things. When you find a location that combines avenues of approach, obstacles, and observation, what does that tell you? It's probably key terrain. So what key terrain is, it is terrain that will give you a advantage over the engagement. It's, it's, someone once described it to me, like chess players, like really good chess players, uh, they're telling me that whoever controls, if you look on a chessboard, the four center squares, whatever player is able to control those four uh, center squares, they will most likely win the chess game. The four center squares on a chessboard is the key terrain. And much of the battle and how you arrange it is to control those four center squares. So now that if I find these locations that, that have that Overwatch Avenue's approach, the choke point, combine that with Overwatch, this area here is most likely key terrain, and I mark it with a K. If I can control that point, I control all of this. If I can control this point, I can control all of this. If I can control here, I can control all of this. Now, what I've done is, in just probably about four or five minutes, I've looked at a map and instantly came up with what I need to focus on and how to use terrain to my advantage. So if I'm going to move up from here to here, what are the places that I need to focus on to win this engagement? I just named them for about our last one, cover and concealment. How I'm going to use cover is if these are my key terrain, then I'm going to try to figure out how I can use cover and concealment in order to seize or retain or get the enemy off of these areas. For example, cover, I'm going to move up. If I moved up in here and use this little ridge line as cover, and then maybe I can make my way around here, some goat trails or whatever, to get to this point. Or concealment, for example, if there was a stream or a, re rock, a creek bed, that's how I can make my way up there. This will help me as I make my way to find and seize these key terrain points. What I'm doing is I'm using the acronym ACOCA. And instead of breaking it all down and describing it for the entire like breadth of where I'm operating, I'm breaking it down into its elements and I'm quickly finding where the key terrain is. I find the key terrain by combining these disparate aspects. So first, with your map, identify the avenues of approach. Mark them. Study them. Second, combine your avenues of approach with identified obstacles. An obstacle is anything that funnels you, that restricts your movement. Bridges, mountain passes, Anytime two roads, like intersections, you have to go this way. All roads, er everything combines through one choke point. It's a choke point. Combine the avenues approach and find those choke points. Then identify where you can best observe and dominate that obstacle controlling that avenue of, avenue of approach. Remember, this is important to understand. Obstacles are always under observation. Obstacles are always under observation. So find where the enemy is going to observe it from. Most of the time, it's going to be a race. A race to get to those choke points and a place to observe it. Once you've combined these three things, you've just identified your key terrain. Now, once you've identified your key terrain, you have a choice. Do you fight for it? Or do you avoid it? That's your choice. But at least you'll know where it is because the enemy will identify the same terrain and they will race for it. And they will try to get there first. When you hear the whole famous, the, uh, the famous you know, dictum that said, get there, the firstest, get there with the mostest, the firstest with the mostest, that's what they're talking about. You find the key terrain and you get there first to control it. If you, if you can't get there in time, then you have to decide how you're either going to fight for it or avoid it. If you're going to fight for it, that's when you look at cover and concealment. 
How do you use cover to bound in in order to fight for it? How do you use concealment in order to retake that terrain? Or you avoid it to continue your mission, and you use cover and concealment in order to avoid that key terrain. Because the only reason that's key terrain is because the enemy and you are there. If you move, it's no longer key terrain. It's if just you terrain. identify key terrain, and it's not to your advantage. You either have to take it or avoid it. But if you are in a position of disadvantage, move. Go someplace else. And that key terrain no longer is key. It's just terrain. It's just a hilltop. It's just the place that ties people up there. Anytime camp. you have an avenue of approach with an obstacle, that's and then where they're going to overwatch it, that becomes key terrain. So now we have a choice. Can we get there first? If we can't get there first, then we're most likely going to have to fight for that. So therefore, if we're going to have to fight for that, how are we going to do it? Well, we've talked about you know how we employ to make that into you know a kill box, and how we're going to you know move up and drop mortar fire up there. How we're going to uh, how you use cover and concealment. For example, maybe we make this approach up here by this cover and work our way around, and so on and so forth. But that's you're going to then look at cover and concealment as a way to get in in order to fight for that key terrain.